This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how I take photos of myself. This is going to be new and exciting and as you guys know, I'm a bit of an awkward dumpling so it's definitely going to be a process. But I wanted to bring you along with me and just show you how I do it. So stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do want to see more photos, make sure to check out the link in the description below. It's going to be right there and for now let's get right into the video. As some of you know, I have recently started taking more photos of myself and I thought it would be kind of fun to show you the process. I don't do it a lot because I don't feel super comfortable in front of the camera yet and trying to manage taking photos of myself and filming and all the other things, it can be a bit exhausting. So we kind of try and avoid it. But for this one, I thought I had to show you how I did it because it was such a fun photo shoot. So today's photo shoot is going to be in this really cool pink studio. The studio actually has three different sets and I found it on Peer Space. I will show you the listing here. And as you see, it has this really cool, fully pink set. So the main idea behind this photo shoot was actually the dress that I purchased recently. I really loved the vibe and how it looked. I also got a pair of matching heels that I found for a really good price online. So for today's setup, I got the Canon R8 and the Canon 24-205. The reason why I got the 24-205 and not the 24-70 is mainly the price. I think the 2470 is close to two and a half thousand dollars, which I think is insane. Um, this lens, however, is around thousand two hundred dollars as far as I can remember. It is f4, but to be honest, as you guys know with my work, I do mostly shoot on f4 or f5.6, so I don't think it's a huge deal for me. The Canon R8 is also pretty cool in the sense that it has an interval timer. And for those of you who take photos of yourself, I think you will quickly re realize how important the interval timer is. Basically for my Sony a7R4, which I love, the interval timer still works. However, you can't change focus. So once you set it up, it's set for good, which you think is such a bummer because when you're taking self portraits and you're moving around a lot, it's not really viable. Um, you will literally move a few steps off in the wrong direction and you're out of focus. And on that note, I also got the Godox Lux Jr. It's a $60 flash. You can get it on Amazon. It's battery operated, like a regular AA battery operated. And it's not a great flash by any means. However, saying that first, it's really tiny. As you see here, it literally fits in the palm of my hand. It's so small and super light as well, which is super important. But also it's very, it's sitting very close to the camera. So when you see here, um, it sits right on top of the camera, which means it doesn't cast a very thick shadow like some of my other flashes do. So this is a good option. It definitely has its downsides that I'll be talking about, but for the setup, I was pretty happy with what I got. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Are you looking to create a stunning website that showcases your brand and tells your story? Look no further than Squarespace. With their easy to use platform and beautiful templates, you can design a professional and modern website in a matter of hours. Squarespace is perfect for photographers, small business owners, and entrepreneurs. Don't let the lack of coding skills hold you back from creating a website that you'll be proud to show off. There are hundreds of fully customizable templates to choose so you can really make it your own. The platform is packed with features like e-commerce, SEO, and social media integrations, which is crucial when it comes to running your photography business. If you're like me and constantly on the phone or in meetings with clients, Squarespace offers you scheduling tools for your website as well. These tools allow you to create and manage appointments, bookings, and reservations through your Squarespace website. Your customers will be able to view your availability, schedule appointments, and pay for services directly at the site as well. If that sounds like something you'd like to try, make sure to go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And once you're ready to go, use my code squarespace.com slash Anit. Originally, I wasn't planning on shooting with the flash, even though I took it. I was just thinking that I will do this pink shoot. However, when I went to the studio, the light was less than ideal. It was actually kind of murky and gray, and I didn't really like it as much. So I decided to use the flash because I thought it would give it a pop of color. I also do find that 
that I like photos of me with flash a lot. Now, one thing that I had to keep in mind is because this flash is kind of janky, <laughs> it's not the best. I had to set up my interval timer every four seconds because if I did it any sooner, the flash uh, wouldn't go off every second shot. For the set, I was wearing the pink dress and the heels and I wanted something super kitschy and really loud and really bright. For me, being in this character was really cool. We had a lot of props to work with, which was really nice as well. There was these vintage phones there. In terms of posing, I was trying to be super over the top as well. I was trying to do poses that will elongate my legs. Majority of the time I was shooting on the 24 to 35 uh, mil length because I think it just works better for me. I did take some photos on the 50 as well. However, again, I kind of prefer the longer focal length as it distorts it in the right way if you set it up the way you want it. Um, a lot of the time I was trying to keep my legs more towards the camera because it kind of elongates them. I am 5'9", so I don't really need it as much. However, I do like the look and it's the look of my regular photography. So I just kind of wanted to continue with that and make myself look the way I make my models look. One thing that I highly recommend if you're taking your own photos is to have some sort of a pop-out screen like in this camera. So here, as you see, I have the pop-out screen. So when I'm taking photos, I can see myself underneath. It's not ideal. I'm a bit blind, so I can't see myself that well, but I can kind of see how my poses look. And it's kind of like staring at yourself in the mirror. There is a very different um, feeling when somebody's just taking photos of you and you have no idea what you're looking like versus if you are standing in front of the mirror and you're posing. Um, it's a way, way easier way to go about it. And it's definitely a hack for me to be able to see myself when I'm taking photos. Again, it's not ideal. You can't really see yourself that much. However, it does definitely help immensely to spice up your photos if you can kind of have an idea of what you look like. Okay guys, that's it for today. Thank you so much for checking out this video. There are more photos where these came from and you can click the link below in the description to check them out. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.